Hey everyone, so uh, this is a quick demonstration on just the basic lights inside of OmniKit. Uh, so if you wanted to know how to kind of transition from Maya or you're trying to play some lights in the scene, um, it's just nice to know that there are some differences between the lighting. Um, because we're in a ray trace engine, we have slightly different light types and uh, they're not quite the same as what you might expect in a typical um, content creation tool. So especially if you come from like older tools. So let's just go through them really quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a light. And I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is put this distant light. Now this is typical, this is kind of like a skylight. Um, it's basically just a, a full light that just casts in one direction. So if I were to go ahead and create a uh, cube and put it up here, you'll see that we get the shadows and everything works fine. But it's a pretty simple light. It just uh, kind of casts everywhere and um, very, very simple, simple light. So that's your distant light. This is useful for your sun or any kind of really, really distant lights like like a sun. It's basically what it, it's basically a sun. OK, so that's the distant light. Um, let's move on to the next. So here we're going to go into the disk light. Now, this would be your closest approximation to a spotlight. And as you can see, when I put it right here on the floor, it's a very round disc. And this is very similar to our next light, which is gonna be the rectangle light. Now, our rectangle light is basically the same thing uh, as a spotlight. It only casts in one direction. So if I were to turn this upside down, you would see that we wouldn't get any lighting underneath it, right? So it's basically like a spotlight, um, but it's more like a light panel, okay? So you really see it when you get close uh, to a surface, but you know, at a slight distance, it starts acting more and more like a, a spotlight. And the same thing is true with your disc light. Okay, so as you start pulling it away from the surface, you get a little more, uh, you know, of a nice fall off, like you would expect from a spotlight. Uh, it's not truly a spotlight, but it's kind of the closest approximation. Um, okay, next thing, let's uh, move on to our sphere light. Now, this is uh, probably the most costly light we have in the group. Uh, so use this with a little more prejudice, uh, but it also gives absolutely beautiful light. And as you can see, we're emitting in all directions. So this would be your typical light bulb. Um, but again, if you can get away with one of the other two, you might be finding a little performance gain. Uh, so you might want to keep it to uh, those other two. But um, this one is a beautiful light and it casts gorgeously. As you can see, we're getting really nice shadow casting behind that object. Um, just very, very beautiful lighting. Um, okay, so that basically covers the, the primary lights that we have. So uh, we have our distant light, our disk light, our rectangle light, and our sphere light. Now, there is some other things we can do for lighting. Uh, they're not technically lights per se, but let's go ahead and uh, try something out really quick. So let's go ahead and go into my user folder and pkind, where are we? Here we go, pkind. And let's just go ahead and grab my sky dome here. So it is under PK Skies HDR. And I'm just going to drop this into my scene and set it to zero, zero, zero. And now I'm just going to add a material to my shader. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a HDR image and once this loads there we go so here we can see that I've got some lighting coming in from the side and if we go into real uh, path traced mode we'll see that it's actually illuminating our scene so that's kind of the brightest spot and as we can see if we let this resolve we'll get nice believable lighting from over there let me try something that's a little more predictable uh, yeah, this one should be good. Give it a second to load. All right. So here we have our sky that is now illuminating. This is a little dark, so I'm just going to up the brightness. But as you can see, we can really nicely illuminate our scene with full emissive lighting. And if you use HDR, you get even better emissive qualities out of your, um, out of your lighting. Uh, but they do have to be true HDRs for them to really work right. Um, 
But that said, you know, any kind of emissive you can load into here and it'll work. Um, so yeah, emissive channel can also beautifully describe light. Okay, so that's basically all the necessary lighting uh, tools that we have in OmniKit at the moment. Uh, there's some more to come. Uh, when they come out, I will update this video. Thanks for watching, and hopefully it's helpful.